Students Incorporated, a podcast where we dive into relevant topics and issues related to the world of business, technology, education, and design. I'm your host, Mr. Jason. Episodes include student conversations, interviews with thought leaders, and inspirational stories with an international flavor. This podcast is created and produced with the help of students from the International Community School of Bangkok. In today's episode, we explore the topic of cultural transitions, and I'm joined by our student co-hosts, Lion and Linda. We also welcome our special guest, Mrs. Amber Quick. Thanks for joining us. But before we jump into our interview with Mrs. Amber, I'll turn the mic over to our co-host. Let's hear the quote of the day. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, if life were predictable, it would cease to be life and be without flavor. Remember, my listeners, always live your life with flavor like KFC's famous fried chicken. But before we get to Mrs. Amber, here are some headlines from our news desk. ICS Carnival was a smashing success. Thank you to everyone who attended. In other news, Bangkok continues to rank 11 in the world's worst traffic. However, if we look on the bright side, Thailand ranked 6th place in 2022 Bright Side Beauty Pageant. And for some international news, a drought in Europe has recently revealed hidden villages, sunken ships, and lost hunger stones not seen since World War II. Thank you for those headlines, Linda. Now let's jump into our first segment with Mrs. Amber. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule for this episode. Our co-hosts have some great questions they'd like to ask you about your journey through different cultures. But first, I'm not sure everybody knows your last name. It's Quick, correct? Correct. Speaking of your last name, how quick are you, Mrs. Amber? If you, Mrs. Karen, and Mrs. Donnie race in a 50-yard dash, who do you think would win? Oh, that's pretty easy. Mrs. Donnie would be all of us. Um, And actually, you may not have known this, but for a long part of my life, I was a runner. I went to university on a scholarship for running, and um, ironically, I don't have a fast twitch muscle in my body. I was a long distance runner. Um, Another story, another time. We've heard that you've traveled a lot. Which countries have you lived in for how long? Yeah, thanks, Linda. Um, I grew up in the U.S. and lived there till I was about um, 27. And then we moved to Hong Kong and we lived there for nine years. And then now I've been in Thailand for five years. Uh, my Ch- I actually have a Chinese name. It's Gui Baoya. Those tones may or may not be correct. And a lot of my students at my last school would call me Kwai Lao She. Very nice. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think it's a great name, Mrs. Amber. (laughs) So uh, when you decided to move to Bangkok, what were some of the determining factors? Yeah, we were um, looking for a different sort of lifestyle. My husband and I were kind of hesitant to get caught up in this ideal kind of American dream lifestyle. Uh, We had, you know, a lot of friends around us that we that we felt were kind of looking for these certain things and always trying to get um, this kind of American mindset and that to us that wasn't really a definition of success so we were looking for a little bit something different. I had a best friend that taught in China for many years and she was always trying to convince us to move overseas and try teaching overseas and so after several years of you know talking to us about this um, it was finally something that we looked into. It must have been hard for you and your family to adapt to a whole new culture. Did you encounter any obstacles or culture shock? Um, Actually, you know, a lot of times when people transition, they say you go through this, this kind of certain you go, you got it's kind of, you kind of hit this honeymoon phase, and then you hit this deep transition culture, which can be really hard. Um, I know, like for the seniors, when you guys do some of your transition stuff, they'll talk about this. Um, um, I feel like for our transition to Hong Kong, it was actually kind of this whole upward thing. It was all just very exciting. We loved it. We really embraced um, Hong Kong. We love Hong Kong. Um, so there wasn't so much, but obviously pretty much everything was new. I remember the first time in the grocery store was absolutely overwhelming. These teeny tiny aisles packed with people. You don't know what anything is. You don't know where anything is. And just kind of some of those moments being really difficult. Um, can I share about an embarrassing story? One of our first. Yes, <laughs> of course. Of this course. may or may not have involved some of my older sons. Um, if you know what the um, Pun Choi uh, part festival is in Chinese New Year, um, 
So there is, there is, at Chinese New Year, everyone decorates their houses and the temples and every village has like a ancestral building, I guess you want to call it, a bit of a temple, right? Um, and everyone has like those orange trees, those Mandarin orange trees, right? It's decorated out front. It's like symbolic of wealth and, and all this. And um, so at the temple, my, my, we like to go to the temple because right next to it was a little fish pond and you could feed the fish and everything. And um, some of my children who will not be named um, went one day when they were playing and they were playing with their friends at this temple and they found these orange these oranges on these bushes that were outside of the like ancestral worship center right it's also a really beautiful building not only just for worship but it's also where they keep the genealogy so these families who live in these villages it's amazing can track back their genealogy for so many generations it's really incredible anyway this one particular had a like an entrance way but then in the middle of the the foyer we'll say there's like a cutout like a sun a sunroof whatever like this empty spot and they Thought it would be really fun one day to take these mandarin oranges and they started throwing them like you know, like a basketball game they were trying to get however many oranges they could get up over the roof through the hole in the center of the roof into the building which was like the worship center obviously the village leaders like saw them and came running out it was hor it was horrifying it was absolutely embarrassing and then in true chinese culture of course instead of being upset with us well i mean they probably were upset with us but instead of like shunning us they actually came and invited us to this poon choi festival <laughs> and we were like our our friend was like oh no you have to go like and you have to take the red envelope and you have to like basically you know repay this this re and it was it was it was a very neat cultural experience it was also very embarrassing because everyone in the village knew what our kids had done um, I would say that was a way that we were not very respectful of different cultures in that time. <laughs> but they forgave you. They did forgive us, That's... yes. And my children lived to tell, tell no. the tale. <laughs> very good, very good. That's a very fascinating story. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Amber. <laughs> Our next question is, what were your family's initial reactions to moving? Yeah, well, my two, we just had two boys at the time, Ben and Isaiah, and they were pretty little. So they, I mean, they were kind of excited about it, but a bit clueless really it was just kind of like okay mom and dad are excited about it it did take my husband two years to say yes this was something i talked to him about for many years and he was really resistant he grew up in one town in indiana in the middle of the cornfields and then he went to college like an hour and a half away and that was really like the expanse of his travels um, but he did over time um he did this was something that he really started to look forward to as well our final question for this segment is what is your favorite food in hong kong Oh, so many good foods in Hong Kong. Um, I love dim sum, so hagao. I mean, hagao is my favorite. That's my favorite one at all. Chicken feet really aren't bad. If you haven't tried Chicken. them, you shouldn't try. I know the idea is hard, but the flavor is so good. So almost any dim sum food, any bubble tea, jeonju uh, laita is like a you know a regular ordering that I'll go to. Um, yeah, dumplings, bubble waffles. Ah, oh, so much good food. Okay, with that, we'll be right back in a moment with more from Mrs. Amber, world traveler, principal, and the 50-yard dash <laughs> champion. ICS's very own literature club is hosting a book drive for pre-loved children's books. If you have books suitable for lower elementary students, please consider donating them. The collection boxes will be placed at the front of school, past the turnstiles, and in the media center. If you have any questions, you can contact the leaders, Linda Cho, Eliza Mast, and Ronnie Kotari. We are back with part two with Mrs. Amber. It's always fascinating to hear the personal journeys of people we know. With that said, let's jump back into our questions. So, Mrs. Amber, was there anything difficult that you experienced when you moved from Hong Kong to to Thailand, or was it smooth start? Mm, that's a good question, Lion. Uh, it was not a really a smooth start. I think because the move to Hong Kong had been so seamless, I was kind of expecting that. But it was hard. Uh, leaving Hong Kong was really hard, and so there was a lot of like emotional turmoil, right? Just saying goodbye and, and leaving another community. But then um, when I came here, I actually had several. I had a very rough first year, if you ask anyone that um, it kind of was close to me during that time. About, I don't know, week six or seven of being here, I was already kind of, you know, emotional and stuff, but about week six or seven, um, I ended up in the hospital. I, I actually, I nearly didn't make it, honestly. Um, they ended up having to do an emergency surgery 
anyway, it was a very long ordeal. I was in the hospital for about three weeks. Um, and it was hard. It was, it was a really hard situation, but I think through it, God really used that to like bring community around and help me kind of connect with people in a very different way that I wouldn't have obviously reached out for. This isn't what I would have asked, um, for, but it was, it was a rough start, but, um, it was, it was really beautiful too. And, and, and after that, I feel like, you know, I really kind of settled, um, into life here. Since the culture in Thailand is different from Hong Kong, what do you love about Thai culture? Yeah, Hong Kong and Thailand are very different. And when we looked at coming here, I thought, oh man, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna do with Thai culture because some of the things I really valued about Hong Kong was like its orderliness, it's very on time. Like every train, you know exactly how many minutes till the next one comes in the station, and they're very fast. It's only like two to three minutes usually. Um, things just run a different way, and that tends to be maybe how my mind runs. That's what I kind of value is like efficiency and things being done on time, and um, yeah, kind of things running smoothly. Um, um, but Thailand has this, uh, it's kind of raw, right? I, I, when we looked at coming, I kind of was like, oh, it feels a little bit like the Wild West to me, kind of compared to Hong Kong. Um, but I've found that I've actually really fallen in love with this culture um, and prefer it in the long run. I found that in Hong Kong, I was really just like, we were running at this breakneck speed. It was insane. The lifestyle it was just like, we were constantly busy. Everyone was, it was just kind of the lifestyle. And it was fun. It also was maybe not a long-term <laughs> um, thing that I could have kept up with. So this is this to me feels like a more relaxed culture. It feels like there's time for people. Um, it feels more friendly to me. Now, now it's an unfair statement to make on a whole group of people I know. But um, as far as like what people present, um, it's not as polished here in in Thailand. You know, there's a lot of rough edges. You go down, you know, Bang Nhat and you'll pass like almost basically like a slum. And then the next time you have like one of the biggest malls in the area right next door to each other but I really love that it it means that like there's not this hidden poverty right it's there for you to see and I do like that because it reminds me of it, well it reminds me a of how how blessed I am and then like challenges me what should I be doing with this what can I be doing to give back to people um, so to me, there's very much this culture and beauty that's so evident in Thai culture um, that yeah that I've really grown to love. Very cool, Mrs. Amber. Mm. I also agree that Thailand has a certain charm to it. Mm. But uh, how are the students different between the countries where, where you have taught? <laughs> yeah. um, so the schools are, actually the schools are somewhat similar, but the schools themselves are different. So of course the students are different. Um, this this school here is definitely more diverse. Our, our last school had probably started that way, but then over the years, changed um, and I really love the diversity here whether that's like ethnic diversity um, socioeconomically or religiously that's just something that I think ICS Bangkok my last school is actually ICS also which can get confusing sometimes ICS Bangkok brings to it and it's something that I really appreciate about this school because you've been a part of both ICS middle school and high school could you describe some of the big differences between them yeah, um, if you've spent much time with middle school students, you'll know that there's a pretty big difference between middle school and high school students. Um, both of them have a very fond spot, spot in my heart, but obviously for different reasons. Middle school students have been the ones that I spent most of my teaching career teaching was usually with middle school students. Um, they're crazy, they're fun, they're wild, they're very like awkward, it's fantastic. Um, it's a fun group of kids to work with. Um, high school students have some of those same things, those same traits as well, but in a much more like really working to kind of like, okay, I understand or I recognize these things about myself, now what does that mean for me or how is that making me me? I've always loved um, working with high school students over the years more and like I would do more of like a mentoring or discipleship type role um, and those were always like my favorite kids to kind of connect with and uh yeah that's that's something that i really love about uh high school students versus middle school students although of course they don't need to be versus they're both they're both great in their own right so how did you become the high school principal what was the transition like going from your previous role to this role Oh man, it's been fast and furious. I came to ICS Bangkok as the sixth grade science teacher. Partway through my second year, 
um, this role this role opened up this assistant principal role it was something that I had really been interested in for a number of years been kind of thinking oh this is something I think I would like to do but I would like to do assistant principal that's really what I wanted to do <laughs> so far way through my second year that that position comes up and I, I, I get it so I'm kind of trying to prepare for that and then I thought oh this is what I want to do I want to be assistant principal for like at least five to six years it was a new position so I could kind of create it right I could really work to so like, what do we want this to look like? How is it best going to serve the school? What it, what will it look like? <laughs> Before I even think about anything else, that did not happen. We had a shift like the next year, right? Mr. Darren, our beloved headmaster at the time, head of schools, um, left and we thought things might say so, but they didn't. Everyone kind of shifts and I find myself in the high school um, principal position. So it was uh, way sooner than I had thought or expected or, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I am really enjoying it and it's it's been a fun ride. And then COVID. And then COVID so. <laughs> times three, yes. Mm -hmm. Lastly, do you have any advice for seniors who may be preparing to move into different cultures? Yeah, um, I love what we do at the school, Mrs. Jen and the counselors, they will host some transition type things. I guess my advice would be hang in there this last year. A lot of it's going to feel, I don't know, I feel like uh, this time of year, there's often seniors that get frustrated with things, I don't know, the other things they have to do or the way things are. And I think that's very normal. Um, and then and then as the spring goes on it kind of turns around and i think a lot of seniors realize like oh wait i'm leaving and then they become very like reflective and very very sweet and it's fun so anyway it it is it is can be i don't know it can be a bit of a roller coaster i feel like this last year but um hang in there yeah i mean you i would say listen to the advice of the people who went before you but i know when you're in that you don't really want to listen to those people um, but it is the same, the same kind of feedback comes back year after year. Oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done this sort of thing. So I don't want to bore you with that. I will say when the time comes, when the transition, we offer like transition seminar, Mr. Sean has been leading some transition things, which are excellent. Like go to it, try to take it to heart, even if it doesn't feel real at the time. Um, yeah. And just enjoy the time you have with your friends, make the most of it, um, dig in and, and enjoy the time that you have here. And with that, our time is running out for this segment with Mrs. Amber. Thank you for giving the seniors some great advice about how to move into another culture, especially as many of them are thinking about going off to college or university in other countries. Our quote of the day connects very well with the subject of culture. Culture can seem unpredictable at times, but the unpredictability is what adds flavor to our life. As we end this episode, we'd like to thank our listeners for joining us. Please stay tuned for the release of more episodes as we continue to dive into topics and interviews relevant to you, our listeners. This podcast would not be possible without the hard work and support of our international student production team. All music and sound effects are courtesy of Pixabay.com, a vibrant community of creatives sharing copyright-free images, videos, and music. And we are signing off until next time. We are Students Incorporated because your voice matters.